Hello, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Jason Lutz. Now recently on this program, we've been focused a lot on the progressive nature of Nashville and the surrounding areas, especially in regard to business and the economy. Well today I have a special guest who's actually one of the people behind the scenes fighting for a diverse and inclusive economic climate here in the area. I am sitting with Dr. Phyllis Qualls Brooks, the Executive Director of the Tennessee Economic Council on Women. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. You got it all out. I all three all. names. Thank you so much. I did it perfect. See? Yes, you did. I'm getting good at this. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, I was very excited about the opportunity to sit down with you because I am, I'm going to say it, I'm almost a fanatic about the economy and about business. And and I love Nashville so much, such a progressive city, in my opinion. And to meet someone that's actually had a part in making it that way, is very important to me, so thank you. I appreciate the compliment. I think it's far more than I deserve. But <laughs> <laughs> now maybe, uh, first you can tell our viewers, what exactly is the role of the Economic Council on Women and, and what are your duties with that organization? Well, you know, the uh, Tennessee Economic Council on Women is uh, it's a kind of anomaly to some people. It's a small state agency, and when you think of state agencies, you think of departments like the uh, Economic and Community Development, mm -hmm. or TDOT, Tennessee Department of Transportation, or Department of Education. Those are large agencies that have staff all over the state. We are one of the smaller agencies. We are located here in Nashville in Snodgrass Tower, right across from the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And we are a department of three with a board of 21 members from across the state. We are administratively attached to the Secretary of State's office, but we are administered by our 21 member board. Oh, okay, that's great. And as the Executive Director, your role is to facilitate our responsibilities of the council? Exactly. Uh, as designated, we are, by the way, celebrating our 15th anniversary this year. Uh, the uh, agency was created by the Tennessee legislature in 1998 and Senator Thelma Harper carried the legislation or sponsored the legislation in the Senate. So we're so thrilled about our, her role in helping to create this agency and focusing on women's needs strictly from an economic lens. Mm -hmm. So we, there are so many agencies and organizations that deal with things through the uh, social area. This agency was created to look at women's issues throughout the state from an economic lens. And whether we are dealing with the lack of health care or the lack of education or the lack of voter participation or women running for office or getting women on boards and commissions, mm. that we look through all of those issues through an economic lens. How does this affect the bottom line? Stories and reports and articles have proven, really reports, that when a woman is at the table, the conversation changes. So if you look at companies where the woman, or where women are on that board, it can really affect and positively impact the bottom line of that agency or that board, whether it's profit or nonprofit. And when we think of boards and the, the, the goal of getting more women on boards, that task generally is looking at women on boards and for uh, the profit companies mm -hmm. because, of course, those are paid board positions. But there are a lot of, most of our, many of our hospitals, you want somebody on that board. There are huge conglomerate organizations that have budgets in the millions and the billions so to sit on a board of that magnitude is really phenomenal. And so to be ready for that, how do you run your small things? Mm -hmm. Because when you get on that board, you just don't want to be at the table. You want to be able to be knowledgeable and have the skills so that you can change the conversation and that you will be looked at as a viable, incredible individual and, and um participant on that particular board. So those are the things that, that we do. Uh, we are required by the legislature to do research. We have to do a research project every year. Sometimes that project may go over to two years, so we'll do a report for this year, then a second report. 
This year, we are doing uh, research on the economic impact of violence against women. And that includes domestic violence as well as human sex trafficking. Mm. And most people look at those issues from a social lens as to how it hurts when the man beats his wife or he kills his wife. We're looking at that and we're taking it one step farther to say you can't put a value on life, of course, mm -hmm. but we can value the services that are offered. So when you start looking at a police department, and Mayor uh, Carl Dean just released his report uh, this week on the impact of domestic violence in metropolitan Nashville. But when you look at a police department, how much it, does it cost to have a whole domestic violence unit? The cards, the staff, all of that. And the, people don't think about that. How much does it cost to have a, an order of protection? to keep this man who's beating you away from you legally. How much does it cost when you go to the hospital because your arm is broken or your leg is broken or your ribs are broken because your husband or your partner has beaten you? How much does it cost in children's services when a husband kills his wife and the children are traumatized? They have to go to foster care and then they have to have therapy in many cases. Some test cost as much as $900 per test <laughs> per child. Wow. So when you look at all of that from an economic lens, so when we talk about domestic abuse, we aren't just looking at, oh, why does he beat her? We're looking at how much it costs society as to why he beat her. And then wow. start looking at recommendations. Wow. <laughs> that was heavy. <laughs> I mean, and while, you're while you're saying it, I'm, I'm sitting there really thinking about all those services do have an effect and have a cost on the taxpayer and just overall. So those um, reports and investigations that you do are very important. Thank you, thank you. Wow. And what we want to do, once the report is done, we don't just sit it on the shelf and let it co collect dust. We of course send it to the governor and the members of the legislature. We will be sending it to stakeholders throughout the state, chambers and social service organizations. This, past, this year, we held hearings in all nine development districts. So we went from Bristol to Johnson City. We went, we went from Memphis, I'm sorry, to Johnson City. So from west all the way to east, mm -hmm. holding these hearings and allowing people to testify from the public defender to prosecutors, to the police departments, to social service agencies, to sheriffs and uh, police heads, police chiefs, telling us the situations that they go through and what their budgets are. Wow. Now when you're collecting this information, do you find that all these, because that's a lot of different cities, municipalities, counties, I mean, are all these areas that you visit to get info, are they very forthcoming with it? Yeah, it's been very, uh, very good for us because first of all, the first response is it, the, the kind that you had. I never thought about it that way. We went to insurance agencies and says, how much does it cost for one of your uh, clients to have insurance? And we found out that if it's been proven that you are a victim of domestic abuse, then your uh, uh, insurance policy may go up at as much as $3 a month. Now you multiply that time thousands of people who oh, have wow. insurance. So all those things are factored in and you go. But when this was done, the agency did a study on this back in uh, and released it in 2006. So when they did the first one, they went to an insurance company and they said, we never thought about it. So then they started doing their own research. And so from that time until now, we have continued, but we're still running into agencies and organizations and police departments. I mean, we have 95 counties in this state, some metropolitan, some rural. So some um, uh, are more apt to do things when mm -hmm. others are not. And the question becomes, uh, I never thought about it. We just do. Well, how much it costs you to just do? do? And, and to put <laughs> it down. A public defender, that uh, you have one or maybe two of your lawyers designated only to handle domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. So how much do you pay that lawyer? How much is that time? And how much does that cost? Court cost. And when you put all of that together, it shows what uh, the state is paying in cost for domestic violence. So we're looking at it strictly 
through an economic, economic lens. Economic. Now, earlier you mentioned that it's very important to have women on various boards, mm-hmm. if, regardless of their nonprofit or profit. Mm-hmm. How does the Economic Council on Women play a role in getting women on those boards? Is it just um, is it a political way that you go about it? Is it through conversation, making people aware? Well, I think it depends on how you define political. But <laughs> everything has uh, has its assets and has a, a way of get it's relational. I'll mm-hmm. say it like that. So if you mean political by relational, mm-hmm. then then that can have an impact. But one of our charges, as we were created is to do a project, a continuing project of getting women on boards and commissions. Now that's for nonprofits with the state. So we have a committee among our board that's tasked with the responsibility of identifying women and submitting those names to the governor when there are uh, vacancies mm. so that they can be submitted and, and to be and considered for those positions. Oh, great, great. So you're keeping an eye out. For, 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 the, for the talent that they need. Yeah, and it's more than an eye. We're, uh, we're not doing just an eye, but we're submitting the information, these, these individuals' credentials, showing that they have an interest in this, their credentials show that they are a viable candidate for this, and we recommend them. Oh, that's great. Now, another question I, I had was, is there any role that your council plays as far as women owning businesses? Uh, as, as a matter of fact, yes and no. We aren't a council that gives out money. So we have no money, we have no grant money. No money. We have money no money. We have no money. <laughs> but what we have is relational, which mm. is very powerful. Our project for next year in 2014 is going to be women in work. Great. And what we will be focusing on is all aspects of women and work. So from uh, resume writing uh, to if you've been displaced and knowing how to get back in the workforce. Jobs now when you are, everything is almost done electronically. Yes, yes. So you even have to submit your resume and your application online. And if it isn't keyed or geared toward that position in your resume, the machine automatically kicks it out. Right. So applying for every job requires work because you have to almost uh, redesign your resume so that you'll have the key words in it for that particular position. It doesn't matter if you can do the job or not. Mm -hmm. It has to do with you being able to do the job to get the job. (laughs) That's that's important. Yeah, so what we will be doing next year is holding workshops, just like this year we held hearings. We'll be partnering with several organizations holding workshops. And what we're doing is building our website. We're going to do a complete rebuild. So we're rebuilding our website so that uh, it can have information and serve as a clearinghouse. If you're looking for the, a job, we're going to tell you where to go. And people will come to familiar places. So people are used to coming to the Economic Council on Women seeking information. Mm. So if that's where I say it's relational. So if we have a website that's very robust and that can provide these women with the kind of information they need to move forward, then I think that that will be a great source. But we don't, uh, and that will include all the way from looking for a job to starting your own business. So you have this dream that you want to start a business, and it's your dream, and it's real in you. And how do you make that dream a reality? Where do you go? So we want to start a clearinghouse that there are things with the economic and ECD, economic and community development uh, department. There are things with the small business. Mm -hmm. There are things with the uh, rural. through the uh, Department of um, Agriculture, Rural Development. So a lot of people don't know that. And there's uh, things you have to do with the Secretary of State and applying for a license. So we want to just build a case for them, build a a plan. Yes. These are the things that you need to do. And certain things you need to get in order where it's personal. If you've got fines, if you've got parking fines, go ahead and straighten those up. If you have a student loan that you haven't paid, go ahead and get those things in order. Mm-hmm. So when you're applying for federal dollars, that won't come back and say, well, you know, back in 19 such and such, <laughs> you, had this. you had this. Yes. Clean it up because you need to do it anyway. So nobody tells you these things mm-hmm. until it's just like you get ready to buy a house. All those things, then pull that credit report. Your credit report becomes your base for everything that you do if you want to start a company. 
So those are things that we'll be doing. That's great. That's that's going to be a great, great asset for for women, selling for anybody. You yeah, know, trying to get some yeah, information yeah. on starting. Now, before I let you go, um, I wanted you to talk a little bit about some good news I heard uh, earlier this year. You got an award from Nashville Cable. I did. Yeah, I and did. I, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yeah. that. For uh, this year, in this past May 26, 2013, mm -hmm. I was the, for Cable has an, uh, a day, a program called Power of Inclusion. Power of Inclusion. Uh, and it's called People Who Walk the Talk. Walk the Talk. So there's a, a corporation or a business that gets the award and an individual. Oh, so great. I was selected as the individual uh, recipient of the Power of Inclusion Award. And I was very thrilled to get it, and it means a lot to me because it does indicate that I do more than just the talk. I work very hard for inclusiveness, oh, that's great. not just in gender, but in race, and also generational. You want to not to just have baby boomers, but you want to have Generation X and Y because we all can learn from each other. Yes. Gener generation X and Y has to step away from the technology and learn how to look people in the eye and talk to them. That's and baby boomers <laughs> have to learn how to quit talking so much and learn how to do the technical stuff. That's right. So That's there right. is a blending <laughs> where we all can help each other. But that was the award I received and I was very thrilled about it. Well, that's great. And also that you have an upcoming event that I would like our viewers to know about. I'll be happy to share that with you. Uh, the Tennessee Economic Council on Women along with the Women's Economic Council Foundation hosts every year a summit for women. And it's going to be October 27th and 28th at the airport Marriott. And it's called Collaboration and Celebration. And that theme was developed because we are celebrating our 15th year mm -hmm. this year as a council. And we're celebrating that. And we continue to clap, collaborate with agencies and partners in all walks of life. Business, nonprofit, profit, state and federal government. So we're going to be talking about leaders. Connie Lindsay, who is the president of the Girl Scouts Board USA, will be our keynote speaker, oh, right. along with Dee Dee Corradini, who is the former mayor of Salt Lake City and president of the International Women's Forum. Yes, I've read about her. And yeah. one, good, good. And one special thing we're doing is um, we have a mayor's forum. So not only we have leaders from the corporate world, leaders from government, four mayors of cities in Tennessee will speak about their mm -hmm. experiences uh, from Knoxville, Clarksville, yes, okay. uh, uh, Gallatin, and um, Germantown. So we'll have those four mayors to, to be a part of that. And we will be releasing our report on the economic cost, the economic impact of violence against women will be released at this summit on October 28th. Oh, wow. That sounds like something a lot of our viewers definitely need to look into. Is there a website that I can... Um for them to get information? Yes, and I'm going to read it so that I don't say it wrong. Yeah, read it, it and I'm going to put it underneath. Okay, and it can always, mm. um, you can always accept, access all of this information by going to our web, website, TennesseeWomen.org, TennesseeTNWomenSummit.org. Okay. So either one of those websites can get you to register. Early bird registration ends on October 11th, but you can still register after that. And we are we will take a walk up registration, so that won't be too difficult. And we have some wonderful partners. St. Thomas has partnered with us, and we're going to do a special session with them. It's called Revive Live at the Summit, and they're going to have four women doctors talk to women about women's issues and women's health. Great, that's great. Wow, <laughs> I know I learned a lot today. Um, this was a uh, a really powerful conversation. I'm really glad that you were able to let me know and let our viewers know about the great things that your council is doing. This information that is very important and I think it definitely will help our state in the long run. Well, we, we try and we try to acknowledge women and if I could say one other thing, yes. one thing that I uh, want to bring out is that as part of the summit, we will have the 2013 induction of uh, the Women's Hall of Fame and six women from across the state will be inducted. Three of them are from Middle Tennessee. Uh, Margaret Bim, who set up the first women's law firm here in Nashville. Wilsey Bishop, who is the highest ranking woman at East Tennessee State University. And Ms. Inez Crutchfield, who is a quite a leader in, here in Nashville and Middle Tennessee. Dr. Shirley Raines, who is the just retired president of uh, 
the University of Memphis, and those of us who are older call it Memphis State, <laughs> and uh, Becca Stevens, who is quite a powerhouse here in the Nashville area, who started the Magdalene House and also started Thistle Farms, and now she started a restaurant. She gets women off the street cleans them up, oh, gets yes, them off drugs, yes. gets them off prostitution, yes. cleans them up, and now have made them productive. I know so, friends out of, um, that don't even live in this area, friends from Northeast, where I'm from, uh -huh. that speak about the Marin House. Oh, it's, yes. it's powerful what she's doing. Yes, done. yes. So instead of being wards of the state, they are taxpayers. Yes. So we all owe uh, Becca a great debt. And then Dr. Jocelyn uh, Wootsberg, who is from Memphis, who was quite a staunch civil rights advocate after the assassination of Martin Luther King and has done so since that time continuously. Oh, so all nice. those fine women will be inducted into the Hall of Fame and oh. you can come to the luncheon if you can't come to the summit all day and all the information is on that website tnwomensummit.org. Okay. Uh, wow, this is great. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time today. My pleasure. And um, this, was, this was a great talk. Thanks. We'll do it really again. Yes, we have to. Anytime you have anything going on, you come back and see me. Okay. We're going to put it out there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. And once again, you have been watching Take 10 on Tuesday with the Tennessee Tribune. See you next time.